My next guest has been living in Jerusalem for over three decades. And he served as president of the Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land for more than 25 years. I sat down with him recently to discuss the challenges of keeping Christians in the Holy Land given the persecutions faced by many in the region. Here's my exclusive with Father Peter Vasco. Father, many don't realize there are 150 to 160,000 Christians in the Holy Land. Tell us what the Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land does day in and day out to preserve and nurture that struggling population. And in full disclosure, I am a board member of the foundation. Well, basically, it's come down to one big factor, education. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very proud to, to announce that we've given over uh, 569 college scholarships, free mm -hmm. college scholarships to these young, these young Christians. Uh, and 98% of them secure jobs in their various professional fields. Mm -hmm. That has been the secret of stemming the Christian exodus. Mm. Uh, and when you see these young people who had no, uh, no, no uh, funding, but had great academic acumen, uh, we gave them a free college education, and now they're working, they're earning, they're getting married, they're able to afford a, a house, an apartment. Uh, the second part of the uh, educational success has been through the uh, vocational schools in mm -hmm. Jerusalem. And we have over 350 students who have gone through a two-year program to learn, for example, uh, electri uh, electricians, to be electricians, mm -hmm. uh, carpenters, plumbers, uh, metal workers, etc. Now, those uh, jobs that the minute they graduate, everybody they're needs, employed, yeah. they're employed. Yeah. So these two areas are extremely important in keeping our Christians there. And these are the ones who were going to leave, and now mm -hmm. these 800 and 900 people are now wow. staying. It's incredible. It's yeah. incredible. It's really... And it's, a, a lot of your work, your day job, when you're not running the foundation, uh, you are out, and we have seen you, when presidents visit, when uh, Mike Pompeo, the Secretary yeah, of Defense, last week, was recently yeah, in the Holy Land, yes. there you were taking him around. What, Secretary of State, rather. Give me your impression of how are people feeling about the safety of the Holy Land? I always hear, well, I'd like to go, but I'm worried about the Gaza rockets we saw a few weeks ago, and I don't think I can go. The problem is that the media, the secular media, uh, their bureau chief is in Jerusalem, and they're speaking about incidents that happened 200 miles away. Mm -hmm. And so they think, oh my gosh, look, this is, this is the, the militants are here in Jerusalem, and they're, and they're killing people, and they're, they're running over, uh, over people and, and hurting people. Not just the opposite. It's, it's very, very safe. There, I've been Gadi now, uh, Raymond, for the last uh, 31 years, okay? Mm -hmm. Never has there been a, 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 a pilgrim ever hurt or injured because of some so-called war mm -hmm. or battle. There is none. It's always taking place 200 miles away in Gaza, yeah. not in Jerusalem. Yes, you have these, these protests, etc., cetera, but, but nothing ever happens to the pilgrims. We're going to the holy sites of Christianity that are in basically West Jerusalem, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So the area, the location, location, location is the key. Uh -huh. And people don't understand that since they don't, yeah. they've never been to the Holy Land. No. But it's very safe to go. It's extremely safe. Yeah. And if I, if I thought it was, it was dangerous, I would tell my groups, don't, don't bother coming. Right. But nobody has ever been uh, affected by that. There was some, there was some incident at the Temple Mount uh, just a few weeks a few ago, few weeks ago, ago. Yes. and uh, my son was in the Holy Land at the time, and his tour group called and said, oh, we're going to cancel everything in Jerusalem. I said, guys, go do something else today. Go tomorrow. You'll be fine. Exactly. And exactly. that's what happened. That's what happened, exactly. Yeah. And Galilee uh, is, is extremely safe. Uh, there's nothing going on there. There's never any, any, no any, any protests, but no. Jerusalem, from time to time, you have protests, but they, people are thinking, they're, oh, they're fighting in the streets. Oh, it's so dangerous. I'm not going to go there. Hogwash, no, excuse me. Frankly, d yes. Detroit and Chicago are probably more dangerous. I but would anyway, think so yes. Uh, tell me about the restoration of really what I consider the epicenter of the shrines in the Holy Land, uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which has both the burial site as well as the site of the crucifixion under one roof, which people don't often realize. Exactly. Well, as you know, the University of Athens uh, undertook a restoration of the tomb a year and a half ago. And they were to, to restore the etiquette 
uh, strengthen the tomb. And the tomb, strengthen the bolts of the of the tomb. They took off the the uh, the steel beam that the British put it in 1933. Mm. They 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 cleaned the the outside of it and the inside. They redid the tomb, etc. The last thing they did was they took an X-ray under the tomb. Mm. This is the day before they were leaving, mm. and they saw that it was all rubble. There was nothing to support the tomb. And so this was in, in, in the National Geographic magazine. Yeah. And so it was our turn, the Franciscans, to now take over that job and to redo the tomb underneath. So we're looking at the uh, co College of Sapienza University in Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to cost between three to four million dollars. Uh, but once the agreement is signed by the three communities, Greek, uh, Greek Orthodox, Armenian, and us, uh, the study will begin. It'll take one year, so you're talking 1220. Right. And by 1221, when they begin the actual uh, restoration underneath the tomb to strengthen the tomb, mm -hmm. the tomb will not be open to the public. Wow. 2021. Because oh. they will so, have to. It's, so visit now. Is the visit really now is the, the best time. The next year and a half. Yes. Wow. And yeah. so when you say rubble, the, the, the foundation beneath beneath the, the tomb, what the remains of the tomb, it's it's rubble. It's rubble. And and the, as they said, the problem is is that with hundreds of thousands of people stepping into that tomb, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's weakening falling. it, et cetera, et cetera. So. Uh, the Franciscans now have the the uh, the responsibility of of doing that part of the tomb. Tell me about taxes, which is an ongoing difficulty for you all. Well, if you if you remember, and you do well, you well oh, yes, remember in the the fundamental agreement of December uh, 1993, they've been discussing what to recognize the recognition of Israel, but in return they were going to be talking about taxes and property between the Vatican and Israel. The Vatican and Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, 26 years later. They're still talking. And what had happened was the, the incident that caused the Holy Sepulchre to be closed was that the mayor of Jerusalem at the time uh, had asked the Israeli government for an amount for the budget for, for, the, for the municipality of Jerusalem. Well, they didn't give it. So on his own, on his own he, he went out and told the Greek Orthodox and the, and the Franciscans and their men, we are going to start taking furniture from your from the hotel so this that you what? own and that started the 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 closing of the of the holy sepulcher mm. and then Netanyahu have a few uh, about a week later uh, said we're going to have a committee to study this proposal mm -hmm. they've had two committee meetings already I wasn't privy to either of those council meetings but uh, it's like an ongoing situation wow. so yeah Wow. But we have to understand that the the properties that the Greeks have, they're they're a vast land prop, they're prop real estate. They have they're very very well to do. The Franciscans have some, but for example, our Casanovas uh, pilgrim houses, mm -hmm. where we make a very small profit, that money is needed to to feed our feed our friars, to take care of the everyday needs, the financial needs that we have, uh, and so this is one of the concerns that. Okay, they're not taxing the churches, mm -hmm. but they're taxing, for example, Notre Dame would be ah, the same thing. Uh -huh. That's making it's a church so property. Church property and, and even pilgrimage. Uh, group. This Why is, would they do that when this is the heart, the lifeblood of the pilgrimage uh, uh, business, which sustains Israel? 65% of the people who come to the Holy Land are Christians. So it just backs up what you just said, that we, we are the major force of, of supporting Israel. Think about it. And so why this is, uh, there's maybe political situations involved here, I don't know, but it's very strange. I mean, we, you know, the Franciscans have been there for 800 years. Uh, we've, we've done so much. Uh, and I, ha I have no idea why that they're pushing this thing now, trying to confiscate or to have us pay taxes. Mm. But it was the luge of, of, uh, from world leaders uh, to uh, Netanyahu, the prime minister, against us. Why are you taxing the, the churches? So it's an ongoing saga, Raymond. Mm. I don't know where it's going to end, but it's, 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 it's around. Well, we'll continue following yes, it as yes. time goes on. Father Peter Vasco, Very nice thank to you meet for being you. Here. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. Great. <laughs> You can find out more about Father Peter Vasco and the work of the Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land at fFHL.org.